So I, I wouldn't mind uh, discussing a bit about the future of wind energy or the or okay. cur the current state actually of wind energy. And Talk about consistency of wind speed offshore and better capacity factors. Um, I think the I think the resource is um, better from that point of view in that, it, that it's less turbulent. It's windier for a lot and, more consistent and, yeah, and, and, as a, and the cons consistent yeah consi you can build consistent things higher so you you bring the better the higher wind speed yeah I mean there's pros and cons I mean the, the, there's the the obvious uh, disadvantages if is that you've got to build um, I mean m many of the areas where they're building the, uh, the, found the foundations into the seabed I mean you've got you've got to work in an offshore environment in uh, you know, I don't know, 50 meters of water. And not tame that. You're going from a man in a van to a, a bloke. You are, because well, the other thing is, I don't think I, I'm I'm not aware that the, the the units the size of what Siemens are building. So these uh, seven megawatt units with 150 meters diameter mm -hmm. rotors. I, I think the logistics are trying to install those on shore. Unless you are right next to the the, the actual shoreline, I think the, the the transport logistics would be important. You certainly won't be able to put them up in the Pennines. You wouldn't get any. <laughs> you, well, you, you won't be able to transport them. You, it would be just. Uh, but, but, yeah. but, but is that true? Because you know there are talks of modular wind turbines for developing countries oh, well, where the logistics are much more difficult. Hang on, that, that, that point, the cost of trying to install it on the top of the Pennine. If you, you know, if you're building like 75 meter long blades. You've got to be able to assemble that and put it together. Um, you know, to, to do that on the top of the you know the, the moors at Peniston, uh, where you know there's quite a few wind turbines at the moment, but they're you know by comparison relatively small. But to try and to, to try and do that sort of construction project there, would probably be just as expensive as. But you, you would get there. So three so percent is the answer. Three, three percent at the moment. Three percent. Okay, and it's, it's it's not unwindy at the moment. Is it? Uh, no, and not what, windy. But what's I very it was a bit breezy today. We were up at eleven percent yesterday, and I was at a lecture. Well, you were you there? Ireland hit fifty percent wind, and curtail at that point. They oh, they do. Yes. The oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, where we're at now is quite small relative. Okay. To well, but, um, the UK's de demand. I think peak demand at, uh, around winter time is about forty gigawatts or something like that. Is it? It might be a bit higher than that. But, yeah, but it's in, in that it's in that region. With the installation, in the inst with the installation of, um, uh, and w whether these projects go ahead or not, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. But we, th there's already uh, a few multi-gigawatt installations um, uh, just off the Yorkshire coast, to Westermost Rough, uh, and Humber Head, I think it is. Of wind, not Humber Head. Wind farms, uh, offshore wind farms. Yeah. Offshore wind farms. Uh, th there's a couple more which will be um, constructed. Uh, well, the, the ones, the first ones which are coming off the production line at Siemens are for um, ones off the Lincolnshire coast, Dudgeon. Um, yeah. I can't remember the other one. Um, and then there's really big installations planned for Dogger Bank. I think so it's, you know, something in the region of uh, you know, nine gigawatt capacity. The, the, the overall, o over the next ten years, there's a possibility that we could have something like thirty gigawatts of installed offshore wind capacity. Which now, is those pumps or always plants were built to allow the nuclear feed, give the nuclear feed a sort of a, a, a knowledge that they had a demand. Mm. You know, that, that if demand dipped or power station trip, we could restart the grid. They now potentially have a market to store large amounts of wind, which says, okay, so now there's additional revenue in that market. Is there now drivers and incentives for those companies to go out and expand their capacity? Yeah, but okay, there's, but not, there's not really much being done about large scale uh, energy storage, certainly not on the scale of pump storage. I, I, I mean, you think about it. So let's say in two years' time, Nissan, GE, uh, GE GM, and uh, well, other manufacturers will come along, are going to do electric cars that will give you a 250 mile range. Mm -hmm. So that will be a, a 90 kilowatt hour battery, something like that. And let's say they sold 10,000 of them, that's mm -hmm. 900 megawatt hours. Battery, so that's nearly a gigawatt hour of storage coming onto the mark, coming on stream onto the network. Okay, so it's that a huge gener electrical generation problem. It is, but we're still only talking similar scale to what from storage can 
you know, well, what I'm trying to say is, is that if the market is effective, as wind grows, offshore wind sustainably grows, um, if the market's effective, then you will see the flexible technologies to enable that equally grow in equal measure and follow that. So that might be storage, that might be a mixture of storage interconnectors, that might be a mixture of interconnectors and demand side response, that might be pump storage and electric vehicles, it might be a new technology we haven't discovered, it might be a mix of technologies that we haven't discovered, it might be oil to uh, electricity to taking carbon out of the, out the air and making fuel. Whatever it's going to be, a market will have to develop. And he was really passionate about small nuclear power stations the size of yeah, a modular. Car, yeah. modular. So you can turn them on and off, phase them in and out as you need to be, match the base load. But equally, if one of them goes wrong, you have a concrete block above it or a lead box above it, something goes wrong, bang, sealed it off, it's set off. And you've not lost a huge percentage of your power generation capacity in one shot. And you can deploy them all over the place, or you could deploy them all in one place and have lots of little ones set next to each other. I thought that was a really great idea. But for instance, the conventional thermal power generation, yeah. uh, okay, a lot of the coal power stations are going to be shut by, next, by the end of next year. Um, but th there will still be a possibility um, of using similar technology but, but still decarbonising the electricity sector by use of uh, biomass combustion or the, the holy grail which a lot of the energy industry is working towards at the moment is to try and make it acceptable to burn fossil fuels into the future by employing carbon capture and storage. What does the sustainable mean? Okay, um, I, I, I guess it, what it means is that the, and of, of course that the resource is sustainable because it's because the wind the wind's going to continue blowing well after the human race. Yeah, but that's not what you meant. But that's not what I meant. No, it's it's whether the um, industry, the, the products, the industry, the infrastructure. Uh, can be um, uh, operated and maintained in perpetuity. It's great all this investment that's going in there, it's going to create a lot of jobs, it's a really big factory, but how long is it going to be there? How long are they going to be building wind turbines? Apart from anything else, once these big projects have been installed and we've got more than 30 gigawatts of power on our offshore waters, if we don't need any more, what, you know, you know, what's going to happen to the industry then? Well, the Can I ask the question yeah. in a slightly different way, which yeah. is, why shouldn't it be sustainable? Yeah. Yeah. I think why shouldn't it be sustainable is that we're going to build a certain number of wind turbines and then the industry's going to... We're not going to be Plateau. building them in the big... You know, we're in this big boom period of building lots and lots of offshore wind. What happens after that? That's what you mean, isn't it? When you yeah, say and it's a, a, a finite um, lifetime to any technology. So you know, in, uh, well, there are a, an, another. Well, yeah, but the, the technology has changed, and so so the, you know, steam technology is no longer <laughs> used. Yeah. And, you know, so but why what, is what this, happens? Why in is it different to any other industry that, that that is relying upon technology? Why is it different? You know, other industries have managed to, to weather a storm like this. Well, okay, yeah, but my point, okay, my point is well illustrated with what's happening to the large-scale coal-fired power stations which were built by the CGB in the 60s and 70s, is that they've come to the end of their life, and because of other um, constraints, which weren't apparent when they were originally built, but to do with emissions of nitrogen oxides and, you know, of course, the CO2 targets, um, they're no longer viable. So, 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 so that side of the of the industry in in the UK is going to be phased out completely. So, but the same is true of you know PCs and tablets. Um, it's a smaller scale, but the same is true. You know, the, the the tablet the industry is having to to it's adapt. people and skills, though, isn't it? The people and skills who develop the wind turbines and the offshore wind turbines, and we are world leaders in developing wind turbines, designing wind turbines, building wind turbines, we've got the biggest wind fleet in the world. Um, what happens to that after, it, after, after we've finished that boom? That's the question, isn't it? It's really difficult to, to get a reliable picture of 
what the, what the what the energy what energy policy is for the UK, except except for the, you know they want a, a bit of everything and they'll try and incentivise this. But then, you know, after a couple of years of seeing what's happening in the market, they'll decide, oh no, maybe we don't want to incentivise that, and they'll change their minds. And so there's an environmental cost for wind turbines too in the manufacture of them, the concrete used in it. Do you want to say something about that? Uh, well, well, it's good. It's a good point. I mean, I I, I can't quantify any of uh, those things, but it's never, it's nevertheless, it's, but yeah, they're nevertheless, not, they're not taken into account in the way that you were describing it for the coal fire stations, and coal power stations. Well, it, it's why is it not relevant? Hold on a second, but you, if you could equally, you could equally, you could equate that to the the environmental cost for the concrete being, you know, having to be poured for. A large scale power station. It's not, it's not, it, I don't think you can equate it to the emissions that come from power stations, but you, you could equate it to the construction you know, impact of an, another type of power station. So, 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 so. But there is an environmental cost for both of those. It is, but I don't it's think not it's. Being taken to I don't think it's on the same scale as the lifetime emissions of a coal fired power station are orders of magnitude different to the, to the environmental impact, the emissions associated with. You just uh, said it, Paul. If any energy technology has its opponents, and wind energy, you know, well, for, for many years, onshore wind energy has been considered by a, lar a large chunk of the UK population as, as being like a, a terrible thing because it's a blight on the landscape. And it's noisy. And, and it's noisy and it kills birds and, it, and, kills and so birds, forth. A yeah. lot of these things are... Made you know, lies, uh, yeah, well, by well, yeah, yeah, I, I was going to say contentious but also uh, you know, exaggerated and extremely subjective. A lot, uh, also a lot of these things you can discount when you build offshore Although there are still people who would argue that it spoils the view of the sea. <laughs> the, the issue with regards to environmental impact... Um, is a I, nice distraction. Well, it's well uh, hang on, if, if we require, if only 50% of our power can come from wind maximum and we require storage technologies and storage technologies require some complex chemicals and some rather damaging chemicals, isn't that doesn't that impact the environment? I, you know, but then you, you've just point. assumed a technology there. You've assumed a, a lead acid well, you tell me, No, a you tell me a, a storage technology, a, a chemical based storage technology that isn't polluting? I, name, name a technology that isn't polluting. Well, that is my point. That's the point. Yeah. That is my but point. It, it applies to everything. But that's the point I'm making. If you build, But you're dismissing, you are dismissing the environmental impact of, because of wind. And actually, it does have an environmental impact because, you know, at maximum is. we can uh, we can have 50% of our power, which means the other 50% has to come from somewhere else. And if we're storing it, that that also has an environmental impact. Everything has an Even environmental impact. Even if it were pumped but storage, because you've got to like you know you got like to carve out you got to dig out a mountain or, or flood, mountain, flood a valley, flood a valley, or you create a reservoir, or you you create a wetland area that wasn't there before. I mean, you can go all the way through it, and you could fight all those arguments, but you just end up distracting yourself from the main issue which is about creating a zero carbon power system but it all comes down this whole thing if you say sustainability is the question it comes to the industry is only sustainable as long as the government is willing to support it and that ultimately is what it comes down to the wind industry survives as long as the government is prepared to subsidize and guarantee a strike price the same with wind this i mean the solar industry was going was was at this point where you could step down the subsidies and achieve good parity and it's been ripped from underneath them because the government has stopped supporting it but we don't know what the techno what new technologies will be around in 30 years time uh, we, we don't know whether technologies will have reduced the um, energy intensity of you know how how we live in 30 years time. Um, we, we don't know what government policy is going to be in like, one year's time, let alone 30 years time. So the the, the n knowing what's going to happen after the lifetime of the current build of wind turbines, uh, offshore wind turbines, I think is kind of an impossible thing to. Uh, you know, it's crystal ball gazing, really. Well, yeah. Which is quite good. So, yeah. what's um, what's what, what's what's sustainability? Do you think? Do you think 
Yes. What does what does sustainable wind farm? You asked the question. Yeah, you haven't answered it really. You've no, skirted around it. You know what what you basically. Well, I think. Of. But the thing is, I think I think from your definition, nothing's sustainable. That's the thing, that's the point. That you know, no, nothing, no human activity uh, can be e deemed. E every technology becomes obsolete at some stage. Yeah. You know, if if we find a, a thorium reactor that or whatever a nuclear reactor that isn't based upon fission, based upon fusion, our energy. Um, decisions will change overnight, you know, and and actually, you know, all of the the wind farm that we're talking about here is completely obsolete. And now yeah. we haven't done that yet. But if we find a, an alternative form of fuel, then then that might be the case. So does it matter? I think the big question is, does it matter whether it's sustainable or not? All that matters is that we can maintain and continue the energy technologies that we've we decide upon. You know, those yeah. Kind of okay. I mean, I think, years ago. okay. I think we're, I think we're conflating two. To um, definitions of sustainability and this is the sustainability of the technology in the business or the operation if you like and then it's sustainability from it from its environmental impact so as, as long as it's not um, consistently degrading the planet and the environment then you, you could argue that it's sustainable but yeah. th th this is the point about burning fossil fuels is that, that they're yes. there the, the case is that it blatantly is degrading the, the environment yeah. and well, the you're using the word planet. sustainable in a slightly different way and that's environmentally yeah. sustainable the yeah. way you were using it before was about whether the industry yeah yeah whether it can maintain the momentum or whether, 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 whether this is going to be to get the skills we can continue to employ the people we can continue yeah. to get the, yeah. the wind farm we can continue mm. to maintain them yeah. yeah. that's what you're well, yeah whether it can perpetuate itself as, yeah. a, uh, as an industry or whether it'll burn yeah. itself out and, and I personally I think the only way of handling that is a real market, not a fixed market. You know, it well, I think that's what the, 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 the what the, the aim is is to is to, create is, the is, is to let let them let let it loose on, the, and it will be a global market, not just the UK. Market. Now, that, that, can we talk about that actually? You know, supposing that the real game changer here could be that we have a European grid or even a world grid. You know, because it's always windy somewhere. There's always sun shining somewhere. And that, then the storage argument. Will that certainly helps the storage argument. Uh, you know, and and you know, as we speak, we're working towards integrating the European grid more. We've got the, the Norwegian interconnector absolutely uh, uh, coming on. It, it 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 may be that the the that that well, I th I think that the concept behind that is more for the power flow to come from Norway to us rather than the other way around. But nevertheless, the more interconnect interconnectivity we have in. Uh, between European countries, then you, you're right. Then you know, if we have excess of energy in one place, th that would require some means of coordination to prioritise renewables over other forms of energy. But that's not a, that's not which a, means interfering with the market. It's not some. a golden bullet. It's a part of a package of, of answers. It's part of a package. What, of why isn't it a golden bullet? Because it will never achieve all the flexibility you need to generate. Re with completely 100% renewable technology, you need storage. You oh yeah, need no, no, no. Demand. Yeah, but so, we, so we, we, ne clear, we never ruled storage out let's, of there. Well, no, we, but, but let's but be clear: it's answer. part of a package of, of tools you might use. Oh yeah, to but, achieve what you but want. I th but I think anyone who knows anything about power generation and uh, and you know electricity, yeah, uh, uh, you know the the, the, the status of um, energy technologies and uh, and certainly in the UK. Um, it's a f it's a complete fallacy to think that any one technology is going to be the anyone, answer. Anyone who Listen, says the answer is, is nuclear this, power, or the answer is, is it doesn't matter what it is, or, or the answer is wind power, yeah, or indeed the answer is energy storage. The, the, or, yeah, the, the answer is not no, that. It's it's all of them. Yeah, <laughs> That's so oil energy. companies yeah. generally and fossil fuel companies are potentially going from having. 100 say 100 million billion barrels of oil to only be able to extract potentially having a market to extract 20 percent of that because if we go low carbon and if we go fully electric and if we go you know whatever mix of, of energy that's not coming from fossil fuels that's destroying their market so at what point do those companies and this is probably a question for another day what quite what at what point do those big companies start Really, say taking seriously alternative. Energy. Well, I think I think some of them do, or elements in those companies already do. Why aren't oil companies building alternative energy all over the North Sea? Um, because other people are.
I mean, I, you know, maybe, yeah, come on, like, well, Siemens well, are doing it. And they're, they're doing it even though GE are doing it, or Festus, or whatever they're called, are doing it. You know, they're, they're yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that question. That's like saying, you know, what, why isn't, um, you know, a car company, like, building, like, uh, tablets or, or, you know, smartphones? <laughs> you know, uh, you know if the you know if someone else is do, doing it and is a market leader in it, then you but know. Google went okay. We're a search engine. And they went okay. Well, let's search. Yeah, but so what's all, next? All, all I'm saying is, you know, why why j just because it happens to be in the North Sea, why should an oil company be building wind well, turbines? But,